The risk of falls increases proportionately with age. At 80 years, half of seniors fall annually. These documented statistics fall short as most falls go unreported. Falls are the leading cause of death due to injury. Falls account for 25% of hospital admissions and 40% of all nursing home admissions. One-fourth of seniors who fracture a hip from a fall will die within six months of the injury. Falls in the geriatric health care community cost $17,500 to treat medically. Annually, more than $26 billion is spent treating individuals with fall injuries. By 2020, this number is expected to increase to $55 billion. There are a number of different types of falls that occur within the geriatric community. The most common types of falls are falls during transfers, falls from bed, falls due to incontinence, falls due to an acute illness such as a UTI or pneumonia, or falls due to overall decline in functioning and strength. Here are a few hints from the National Institute on Aging that will help avoid falls and broken bones. Stay physically active. Exercise improves muscles and makes you stronger. It also helps keep joints, tendons, and ligaments flexible. Have eyes and hearing tested. Even small changes in sight and hearing may cause falls. Find out about side effects of any medicine you take. Some meds may make you sleepy or dizzy. Stand up slowly. Getting up too quickly can cause your blood pressure to drop. This can make you feel wobbly. Use assistive devices if needed, such as a cane or walker. Make sure it's the right size. And finally, make appropriate home modifications in stairways, hallways, pathways, bathrooms, etc. Department of Health and State surveyors claim residents have a right to fall. This statement, while controversial, moves practice from restrictive care mindset to encouraging mobility and freedom. We have a duty to minimize the risk to residents, however, we cannot prevent falls. Effective fall management is a key to risk reduction. Restraints such as rails, seatbelts, and low beds, for example, are a dignity issue. When a resident falls, there's a likelihood that their behavior is communicating something else. Caretakers must assess if the resident's personal and physical needs have been met. Adults who fall are often found to be hungry, in pain, or incontinent. Some are simply attempting to exercise their freedom. Caretakers can reduce these risks by attending to the needs of older adults, working on strength and balancing, and improving walking and transfer techniques. In regards to recommendations for Connecticut's fall prevention program, there's always room for improvement. Although the state has made great strides in addressing how to properly manage falls among the elderly population, the policy could certainly benefit from more research on the subject. For example, further research could allow policymakers to make new discoveries on the causes of falls among the elderly, as well as how to better prevent them from happening. Education is key to addressing the issue, and therefore the policy should be expanded to provide even more programs to seniors in the community targeting the topic of falls. Of course, the entire country would also benefit from a national policy addressing fall prevention among the elderly, and therefore it is recommended that this policy become more national rather than remain at a state level.